Hello, welcome once again to today's tutorials on antihypertensives. Specifically, we are going to talk about the calcium channel blockers. So we have two main groups. We have the dehydropyridines and the non-dehydropyridines. And as you can see, all the dehydropyridines ends with the dipping, such as the fedipine, nicardipine, felondipine, and so all the dipines that you see are dehydropyridines and they are calcium channel blockers. The next group uh, is the non-dehydropyridines. We have the deltiazem and the verapamil. Now, before we go uh, to see the mechanism of action of these uh, drugs, I want us to see how the heart muscles work to contract. So, basically, in a working atria and a ventricular fiber, we find out that calcium moves into these muscles during the plateau phase of the action potential and this causes release of more calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum over here which is the internal uh, calcium stores and this enters into the heart muscles through the binding of the calcium with troponin and once it binds with troponin the troponin will allow the interaction between the actin and myosin, which will lead to the contraction. So basically, uh, the calcium will leave the sarcoplasmic reticulum, pass through the calcium channel blocker, uh, pass through the calcium channel over here, and enter into the cytosol to cause the effect. And that's all. This will lead to the contraction of the heart. Now, with the use of calcium channel blocker, the calcium channel will bind to the receptors on the voltage-gated calcium channels, as you can see over here in this yellow uh, you know, diagram. Once it binds over there, this will result in the blockade of calcium entering into the cytosol. And this will inhibit or this will reduce the contraction of the heart as well as the smooth muscles uh, you know, of the body. Now, the pharmacologic effect of these drugs, as I've, se as, as I've said earlier on, uh, can be seen basically on the smooth muscle cells as well as on the heart itself. Now, on the smooth muscles, what we see is that the smooth muscles basically uh, uh, depolarize primarily based on the inflow of calcium through the voltage sensitive channel. And so these uh, calcium ions will trigger the release of more calcium from the intracellular stores as we saw in the diagram. And together, they bring about the excitation and the contraction of these smooth uh, muscles. Now, when we give calcium channel blockers, it prevents the entry of these, smooth, uh, these uh, uh, calcium ions. And so it leads to the relaxation of the vessels by decreasing the availability of calcium in these smooth muscles so basically uh, we, we are going to have relaxation of the smooth muscles and uh, these relaxation is more prominent in the arterioles than in the veins we are also going to uh, see dilatation of peripheral uh, you know arterioles and this will lead to the decreased total peripheral vascular resistance and as we've seen already once total peripheral vascular resistance is reduced it will determine or it will have an effect on the diastolic blood pressure and so it will also come down we also see that uh, it causes the dilatation of the main coronary artery itself and also the arterioles and it does so uh, you know, to inhibit uh, coronary artery spasm, as uh, we may see in uh, these uh, anginas. Now, when we look at the pharmacologic effect on the heart muscle itself, we see that, uh, as I've explained earlier on, when we pick drugs such as the non-dehydropyridines, 
which act basically on you know, the heart muscles. What they do is that they cause a negative inotropic and dermotropic effect on the heart. What this means is that they will slow the heart rate, decrease atrioventricular conduction, and also decrease myocardial contractility. So they do so by depressing, uh, you know, calcium-mediated uh, depolarization, and this will suppress automaticity. And sinoatrial node depolarization will reduce, which will also lead to bradycardia. Now, AV node conduction will from this time be prolonged or will be slowed because of the action of these uh, uh, you know, non-dehydropyridines or the action of these calcium tunnel blockers. And this is the main reason why uh, we should not prescribe these drugs for patients uh, who are having second or third degree atrial ventricular block or patients with a left ventricular uh, failure it's very, very important for us to know that now the other side effect uh, or sorry the other uh, effects you know of uh, these drugs on the heart muscle is that uh, they also decrease the oxygen requirement uh, in patients with angina which is also very very important and very useful you know to reduce the incidence of these uh, attacks now let's look at the clinical use of these uh, calcium channel blockers basically as uh, i've explained it is used in the management of hypertension now uh, with the hypertension as i've explained they work by reducing the contraction of the smooth muscles which will lead to reduction in the total peripheral resistance which will also affect the um, diastolic blood pressure also uh, we also we've also seen that they, they cause uh, negative uh, Inotropic effects, negative dermotropic effect on the heart, which also re, you know uh, reduces the rate at which the heart is contracting, and so at the end of the day, cardiac output will reduce. And once cardiac output reduces, as we learned earlier in our previous in our previous videos, uh, we saw that cardiac output also determines the system the systolic blood pressure. And so once it goes down, blood pressure or the systolic blood pressure will go down, and uh, we are going to reduce. Uh, the blood pressure of this patient. We also use uh, these uh, agents in the management of both uh, classic and variant angina pectoris and they, they, they work uh, due to uh, the way they reduce uh, the work of the heart that is the afterload. Yet uh, it is important for us to know uh, that it's not the first line of treatment in unstable angina. Uh, they may, however, be added, you know, to agents such as nitrates when uh, we uh, foresee that coronary, you know, spasm is imminent, and uh, also when uh, the nitrates alone cannot prevent a spasm of the coronary artery. We, in such a case, we may also give these agents to uh, prevent such a thing. We may also use it in uh, supraventricular tachycardia. Now, uh, most often we use uh, these calcium channel blockers uh, in the prevention of uh, migraine and some of these uh, cluster uh, headaches. Usually we use the verapamil and also uh, nimodipine in such uh, a case. Now, when we look at the the, the, the various uh, drugs themselves i want us to go back to the previous slide talk a little about the various uh, uh, drugs then we move on so uh, the first one i want us to look at is nifedipine as i said earlier on it is a dehydropyridine it has a rapid onset but a short duration of action and uh, its action is basically the uh, you know dilatation uh, uh, of the arterioles, which leads to decrease in total peripheral resistance, which leads to what the fall in the blood pressure. Now, 
the direct depressant effect on the heart requires much higher dose and so you know uh, 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 the more you give the more you get its you know uh, effect on the heart otherwise it basically causes the uh, dilatation of the peripheral uh, vessels and it is very important for us to note that uh, nephilipine does not depress uh, sino atrial node or av uh, node conduction now a quick one on uh, uh, sublingual nephilipine as i asked over here should we uh, still uh, give sublingual nephilipine in the management of hypertensive emergencies and uh, agencies you know one thing we must know is that in such emergencies and agencies the goal is to lower the mean arterial pressure by approximately 20 to 30, uh, 20 to 25 percent uh, in the first hour we do so whilst we try to maintain adequate perfusion to vital organs such as the brain the kidneys and the heart itself you see so uh, in these hypertensive emergencies even though we want to reduce the blood pressure we have to do so in a well you know controlled and a well predictable manner and so when we drop the blood pressure too quickly or too fast we rather worsen uh, target and organ damage also another important uh, point we have to note is that with cerebral ischemia we realize that autoregulation of the ischemic area is lost and uh, and uh, as we know cerebral uh, blood flow is directly proportional to uh, systemic blood pressure therefore if the blood pressure is lowered cerebral perfusion pressure uh, in this ischemic area will also be lowered and this will you know further risk the damage of uh, the tissues uh, over there uh, and in these uh, circumstances it is recommended that blood pressure shouldn't be lowered too quickly or too fast you understand and uh, one other thing is that uh, these uh, uh, sublingual nephilipine as we put it under our tongue uh, lowers the blood pressure through peripheral vasodilation and you know can cause an uncontrollable decrease uh, in blood pressure as well as reflex uh, tachycardia and, uh, and so we advise that we don't uh, do such uh, practices since uh, it's uh, you know negative effects outweighs you know uh, the positive uh, effect you know not only is there no evidence to support you know such use of uh, sublingual nephilipine but there are no good data to you know suggest that sublingual nephilipine uh, you know should be used for such uh, purposes you know the side effects may even include uh, cerebral ischemia as well as infection we may also uh, uh, witness myocardial infection and also complete heart block and even death in you know some of these patients and so we advise that we do not uh, uh, use sublingual nephilipine you know uh, in the management of hypertensive uh, emergencies as uh, we've been seeing now a quick one on uh, nimodipine nimodipine is a very uh, you know uh, good uh, calcium channel blocker uh, it is highly lipid soluble and it penetrates the blood brain barrier and so we usually uh, recommend that we use uh, sub uh, what do you call it uh, nimodipine uh, in subarachnoid uh, hemorrhages uh, in this case uh, they selectively relax the cerebral uh, vasculature uh, they will also decrease uh, spasm of uh, the cerebral blood vessel and uh, this will together limit the extent of you know the brain damage and so basically nimodipine is the drug of choice in the management of hypertension in subarachnoid hemorrhage the next one uh, is amlodipine uh, amlodipine uh, uh, has a complete but slow aura you know absorption uh, it's a long acting uh, anti hypertensive or calcium channel blocker uh, would peak uh, after six to nine hours 
and when we use the uh, this amlodipine uh, vasodilative uh, side effects such as palpitation flashing uh, you know sometimes patients may complain of headache and also even uh, postra uh, dizziness are all avoided and uh, uh, because of uh, the less extensive and less uh, variable uh, first pass metabolism of uh, uh, amlodipine uh, its oral bioavailability is higher and more consistent you know and so uh, it's a very good um, uh, calcium channel blocker for us to use now i want us to see uh, the pharmacokinetics but before that i want us to stress on the fact that do not forget that uh, verapamil mainly affects the heart muscles causing negative uh, inotropic and dromotropic effect whilst nephidipine and all the other pains work on the smooth muscles of the peripheral uh, vasculature the uh, deltaism works you know intermediary now the pharmacokinetic of calcium channel blockers as, as you've seen i've made it uh, the admi uh, absorption uh, distribution metabolism and elimination so basically uh, all of these calcium channel blockers about 90 to 100 percent are absorbed orally in a, uh, with their peak occurring between one to three hours with the exception of amlodipine which as i've stated earlier on peaks uh, you know after six to nine hours uh, and they, are, they also have a high tissue uh, distribution all of them are also uh, highly bound uh, you know uh, to plasma uh, protein with uh, the minimum being deltaism which is about 80 percent and the maximum being felondipine which is about 99 percent calcium channel blockers are also metabolized in the liver and are excreted in the urine and they have an elimination half-life uh, you know uh, ranging between two uh, to six hours now a quick one on the adverse effect of uh, calcium channel blockers now uh, on the central nervous system we have dizziness but uh, most of the side effects are seen uh, you know uh, or are related to the cardiovascular system and so we may uh, have cardiac arrest we may have bradycardia and uh, as i've explained i don't need to go into it uh, anymore it is due basically uh, to the decrease in the contractility uh, of the heart we may also have a uh, av block which may be due to the negative dermotropic effect we may also experience conjective uh, congestive cardiac failure hypotension peripheral edema and uh, uh, on the git patients will con uh, complain of nausea and constipation uh, the constipation, uh, you know, is usually as a result of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the reduced entry of calcium, uh, you know, uh, and also relaxation of the intestinal smooth uh, muscle. And this is usually seen when patients are given uh, verapamil. Then uh, it may also cause hypotension. You see, the, the one main side effect of all of these antihypertensives, including calcium channel blocker, is uh, the fact that they may cause hypotension. And uh, I don't need to go much uh, into this. Then uh, we also have edema uh, you know, uh, being uh, reported of. And the edema usually may be seen uh, at the ankle and may occur uh, in some patients uh, due to increased hydrostatic pressure when any of these agents uh, are taken but uh, we usually see these uh, ankle edema with nifedipine and uh, some of these patients uh, may also experience uh, chest pain rebound angina and even exacerbation of uh, symptoms and these ones are usually seen when we suddenly uh, withdraw calcium channel blockers uh, when a patient uh, is taking it and the contraindications to calcium channel blockers are basically uh, in severe hypotension you wouldn't want to give any patient a calcium channel blocker when the patient uh, you know is severely dehydrated or is having uh, uh, hypotension and also if the patient uh, has cardiogenic shock you may not want to give uh, these drugs and also in digitalized uh, patients so uh, basically this is all that i have for you on 
Castle Internet Bloggers. Thank you very much for your time.